Hi, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm going to be showing you my process for reusing um, last year's or old milk jugs that I used for winter sowing last year that I'm going to recycle again this year. Um, if you this is your first time hearing about winter sowing, please check out, or you're interested to hear more, please check out my Winter Sowing 101 series where I talk about everything you need to know from what winter sowing is to how uh, to how to do it. And I'm going to be going through some of those steps today as well. And just in a nutshell, in case you don't have a chance to watch those, winter sowing is a way to grow seedlings in milk jugs that you put out in the winter and you get your seedlings to transplant in the spring. And it's sort of a replacement process for doing that indoors with grow lights. And it's better. All right. So, um... Before I get to talking about today's video, I just want to say that thank you. Yesterday, this channel, my channel, which I never thought would have more than like a couple families and friends, maybe like two dozen people, hit 1,000 subscribers, guys. Now, while this is still small compared to many, many channels, to me, this is beyond thrilling and makes me so happy because it means that I am hopefully providing the kind of information and content that is useful to other new gardeners and maybe not as new gardeners. Um, and it, it, it makes me even more excited to continue doing this going forward. So to everyone who has been part of this channel, who's been commenting, giving feedback, who's been asking questions, which is one of my favorite things to do, is to answer your comments and questions and to see your thoughts on videos. To all of you, thank you so much. I am so grateful. I was waiting for this moment, so we will do a live stream event in two weeks or so, and I'm going to have a giveaway of some of my seeds and other things, so watch for that. All right, so let's get to the rest of this video now. So I'm going to um, actually go through the process of winter sowing a jug um, with a seed that by no surprise is one that you've seen me do before, but I'm going to do another jug of it, which is kale, which I need to do a second jug of it anyway. Um, and then I'm going to show you the kind of what I do to help manage the new container. Um, there's one other thing, which is I have already eliminated weeks ago. I already eliminated these. So I feel bad that I didn't show this in the video, but, um, I eliminated things that were cracked that wouldn't hold, you know, um, that the sides had been torn when you took the tape off or whatever. And that was mostly soda bottles. A lot of them had cracks going down the side, which were an issue. Um, and I tossed those because they're really not reusable because they, you'd have to do a lot of extra taping to get them to be useful. And so like my family has plenty of bottled water, just empty bottle water bottles to share with me, gallon jugs. So I, ha I have no problem replacing those. Um, so I'm a little less concerned about saving every single one of them, but for the environment and for other purposes, I want to reuse as many jugs as I can. I want to keep them out of the trash and recycle stream as much as I can. Before I start showing you what I've done, uh, let me go through the basics of my experience this far. Um, that's the non-visual part. So I bagged, um, them, many of the jugs up after I emptied them out, um, in, in garbage bags. And some I put in bins and I put them in the shed uh, in our backyard, which is not critter proof. And uh, mice got into everything, just about everything in the shed that over the winter um, and the late fall, basically this, from the time that the jugs until now, right? So the mice have been crawling throughout the jugs. And so there is mice poo and other things. They're just not very clean. If you had kept your, if I had kept my jugs in like the basement or somewhere dry and not um, accessible to critters, then I wouldn't need to do the next step, which is every time I've reused a jug from this set, I have taken them, um, I've swizzled them out, rinsed out what I can, flushed that down the toilet. And then any remaining residue, I've um, filled up a bathtub with warm water with dish soap and I just shake them out and I have a, a sponge brush that I'll just, I'm not a sponge brush, but I have a brush that I'll just use inside them to get them cleaned out. But I've heard of plenty of people who reuse the jugs and don't even wash them out, just reuse them. And that's fine because they probably didn't have mice crawling throughout the jugs all summer long and making them stinky and nasty. So this is the bag from the shed. This is one of the bags of my leftover jugs. Um, and you can see some mouse over there um, but I'm gonna take one or two of these and put them in let's find 
I'll take one of these. This one doesn't look too messed up. Um, and this one's a little bent up, so it'll be a good, this one's a little bent up, so it'll be a good example, I think, of trying out. I'm going to wash these. All right, so please ignore how, uh, <laughs> not spotless the bathroom is, although I will point out this is my calendula flowers and calendula oil that I sometimes, um, use in baths, in bubble baths and things like that. I'm going to actually this microphone over here so I don't get it wet. <laughs> so, aha! There it is. Alright, so we have the dish soap in the water. And I'm like have to scrub out this bathtub after this anyway, so I'm not worried about getting it funky at the moment. Taking off big tape pieces. Kind of easier to remove when they're hot and wet. I see that and then it doesn't happen. There we go. Well duct tape is a pain in the bit. And it leaves residue sometimes, but that's okay. That's what it is. My main goal here is just to get the funkiness out. It's not to be perfectly clean, but I don't want any mouse urine or poop in here um, to funk to functify my um, my the chances of my ceilings doing well. So I'm gonna show you now that I have everything washed up. I'm gonna show you two examples of of containers that were messed up last year that you could potentially still rehabilitate, but you don't have to, um, unless you really, that's the thing you wanna be able to reuse them. In my case, like I said, my my parents um, always have extra jugs that they're just gonna send to recycling. So for me, it's not as much of an imperative to use every single one because I do have other options, but of course, the more you can reuse uh, instead of having to recycle or throw out, the better. All right, so. This is one jug that I have not cleaned and I'm not going to. Um, it is bent in ways that it just doesn't want to fit together. It's dented in and it's just really misshapen at the bottom as well. Um, now, if I was tight on resources, I could reuse it, like I said. Um, the other one that I may still use, but it's sort of an example of the tearing I was talking about, but I haven't cleaned this one out yet either. Um, is a soda bottle where when you take the tape off, when you go to get your seed, um, seedlings out in, in the spring, uh, it tears like this. So the tear isn't as bad as some. Many of the tears came down to here and it just the jug wouldn't be usable or would be a lot of work to rehabilitate. But in this case, it's, it's okay um, to reuse, be, you know, because I could just put a little tape down this direction and it's quite possible that the tape will cover most of the gap when I put it around it anyway. So this is one you could reuse if you decided to. So I know I normally fast forward through all this, <clears throat> but I figured it couldn't hurt to just show you all the steps again like I had in my Winter Sewing 101 series. Um, and I will put a timestamp in so you can fast forward to when I get to how to deal with the new jug part, if that makes sense. All right, so I'll just do one jug this time. And I'm gonna do another one of kale. Actually, I'm gonna do it of marigold because I need marigolds. I haven't planted any yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm just doing big because these are bigger plants in general. So we got the tag. So we've got that done. I like to do that ahead because I don't want my hands to be funky when I'm filling up the jug. All right, 
The next thing is we make sure we have all our stuff. So we have the spray bottle, we have the tape. We just used the pen, so we know we have the pen for, um, for labeling the outside. I have scissors because you never know if you might need them. We have our label, and most importantly, we have the seeds. All right, so when dealing with a, a new, new jug, a, a reused jug, my soil is already moistened. Let me get it out without hitting the camera tripod. Ooh, I did it. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is put the soil in like you would normally with any jug. Uh, we'll figure this out. Put the soil in normally like you would with any jug. So we want at least four inches if we can help it. Four inches is optimal and that's usually about right to like right to here, right, right below the lid. So I try to get it fairly close to the top. And I did not cut this jug even. So <laughs> one end's gonna have a higher lip than the other. Maybe one more. Oops, and like I said, this is pre-moistened soil. That should be about right. I like to make sure it goes up past my knuckle because three, three fingers is usually three inches plus an extra little bit is four. So we're pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want at least three if not four. Some, some plants do have shorter um, um, roots and so you can get away with a little less soil, but I don't know my plants well enough to know which are which yet, so I just try to go for four inches every time. All right. Now we've got to put in the kale seeds. Let's put in our tag just so we don't forget her because it's so easy to forget your tag. Yes, it is. And trust me, you want that double labeling. It will save you. Now, because my hand is not wet, I'm not going to go through the whole thing of putting in a little bowl. Let's think. I'm going to do eight seeds because they can be separated out. And I want at least four plants, and these seeds are a year old. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one in the middle. And I'll do nine. I just need to make sure to write down. It's so hard not to put a lot of seeds in. But you're like, oh, how do I know? And you know what? I said I was going to do marigold, and I did kale. All right, well, <laughs> I guess I need to do a new label. Do -do 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 -do. Esther. This is what I get for getting distracted before lunch. So time to make another label. <laughs> I've been very confused by the kale marigold, marigolds in corner that turn out to be kale. I've been very confused by that. All right, kale. And I'm just putting nine seeds here so that since I don't have my journal right in front of me, I can look in the jug and know how many seeds I've used. I don't always do it exactly the same, you know. That's the fun of gardening. You can mix it up as you go. All right. Now we have the right label with the right jug. <laughs> oh, boy. My next step is, of course, put a little soil. Just a thin sprinkling of soil on top of the seeds. You want to make sure it's enough to cover, but not so much that the seeds won't. So I try to remember where I put the seeds. I tend to put the seeds around the edges, plus one in the middle. Especially when it's a dark seed, like a kale seed, it's kind of hard to see. And I have my rag for wiping off my hands that gets washed weekly <laughs> um, and then you want to spray down the bottle right still have my label in here you want to give a nice spritz now some people spray the seeds um, spray before they put the dusting of seeds down I found this is just fine but I also have my soil really wet today compared to normal it's, it's pretty dripping I mean there's a whole lot of water in the bottom of this all right, so now we've sprayed, we've labeled, 
we've seated. So here's the, here's the part about taping it up. So because it's an old jug, there are parts of it that do not line up easily. Do not line up easily and are concave or other shapes. And so you want to figure out sort of the most concerning part of the jug. And for me, because I have this label kind of holding this end, it's this right here. See how this goes in like that? So I'm actually going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to do a small strip, making sure I get the top half first since that's the more weak point. And I'm just going to do that. And that helps hold it in place. You can do this with regular jugs that are like, um, that are like brand new too, but I find it really helps make sure the jug stays aligned as I tape it. Now see, there's a little bit hanging over here. So I'm gonna have to be careful when I tape this down to not have this huge lip. So it's just a little more challenging when you're taping an old jug, as long as it's not super misshapen and I'm not gonna do the super misshapen ones, as I said. All right. You can see this line was when I last year was still learning how to cut a straight jug. And so I had done a uh, permanent marker on the jug. Now this is another common issue. I'm using my kimchi cutters here. This is another issue is that sometimes you will have tape come across this part of the jug where, where it goes in like that. And so if you just put a little slit here that allows it to go in, then you won't have this gap of it not sticking. All right, now. Do, 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 do. And it's not going to look quite as perfect as when you have the brand new jugs because everything's not going to line up perfect. Um, now, I haven't done this before in terms of reusing jugs, so I don't know yet whether that is going to be an issue. But I suspect it won't as long as the jugs continu can continue to act as mini greenhouses, which is the whole point. Now, again, see, I have here, I have this gap right here where it won't come in. And so I'm going to do that little cut. Now I'm going to use the proper scissors this time instead of my kimchi scissors. <laughs> well, maybe I do want my kimchi scissors. Oh, these guys. This guy does get stuck on the... Oh, no, it is kimchi scissors. And when I say kimchi scissors, these are the scissors I cut my kimchi with when I, when I make kimchi. All right. So there we go. And I've only made kimchi once, so it's not like it's a regular thing. I just bought them for that, so. All right, it just was very recent. So you can see this is concave in, but I think it'll be fine because it's taped, it's sealed, there's no huge gaps. And then of course the last thing we wanna do is, what? We wanna label the outside as well as the inside. So I'm gonna do the right label this time and do kale. And today's date, which is, on the phone. I think today's the 14th. We'll say it's the 14th. Pretty sure that's right. Okay. So there you have it. This is how I reuse a jug. It's really not that hard to reuse them. I will say that I have noticed that if there was an old label that sometimes they don't stick as well in the place where the old label was and so you want to make sure that's adhered but really it just means a couple extra pieces of tape usually so not bad. Oh yeah and of course I'm going to take this right outside. All right. Immediately. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so and make sure to hit that bell button so you get alerted whenever new content is available. And um, otherwise, I'll see you next time.